Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. I'm doing something a little bit odd today. I'm actually putting a light bar on my truck. Now, I probably am going to include the unboxing of this, I think. I'm not sure. Um, if I do include it, maybe I'll put it at the end, at the beginning. I don't know what to do. In fact, I haven't even seen the footage for months and months. It's been about six months since this company sent me this. Um, so some disclaimers here. This company contacted me. The name of the company is, let me show you on the light bar here. Oxbeam. Okay. So uh, they contacted me and asked if I was interested in a light bar to install and you know obviously for marketing for them they wanted to send me one. So I do a video on it and I said, sure, why not? And I was thinking the Jeep, you know, my tow vehicle for my RV, it's just an older 96 Jeep Cherokee. And so they sent me, um, I forget how many inches this is. I'll give you guys the specs uh, in the description of this video. Uh, I believe it's a 50 some inch curved, it's a curved one, a curved light bar that would have fit my Jeep, uh, but it also fits my Silverado. And, um, so they sent me the brackets for the Jeep that would go, I think, inside the door jams is where these go. Uh, we'll find out here in a few. And uh, I decided I wanted to put this on my truck instead. The Jeep I hardly drive. The truck I drive all the time. And so they did send me some brackets for my Silverado. Before we get into this, let's be clear. We need to drill to mount this thing. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. And I may end up partway through this video saying, screw it, I'm not drilling holes in my truck, and I don't mind drilling holes in the Jeep because it's an older vehicle. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I'm just kind of turn the camera on and roll with this. Um, so we're going to put this thing in. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. I'm learning too. I'm no expert. I've never done this before on this particular design, and uh, we're going to learn together. So let me show you what's on the table here, and uh, we'll get an idea of my plan of attack. All right, component-wise, to be clear, um, it did not come. Now I don't remember what's what. Which one was for my Silverado? Which one was for the Jeep? These brackets did not come with this kit. They were separate. And uh, in the in the bag, we have some uh, kind of captured nuts where we're definitely going to be drilling a hole and pounding these in and. That's what holds these brackets on. And I believe these these go in the door jams. Again, we're about to find out. So these these were separate. The kit for my Silverado, the kit for the Jeep, uh, were separate. Let me put these aside for right now. Um, the rest of this came in the box. So uh, I I believe the these are a universal mount. You know, they'll go on either side of this. These will sit sit here it's just bracket and I think that would sit on top of the windshield so those brackets did come in this kit it's just two mounting points I don't think I'm going to use these we'll see um, and then it came with some rivets looks like some kind of a pad um, probably some kind of a weather seal Again, all this stuff we're going to find out here soon. These came in this little box here. These were all in the kit. And then you got the light bar, and then you have a wiring harness. And <clears throat> electricity is my thing. For any of you guys watching this that don't know who I am, I am an electronic guy on cars. So I can definitely explain the wiring part of this. It's just a simple 12 volt power and a ground that plugs into here. The main part of the harness right this is hardwired so it's not plugging into the side we have a pretty, pretty long connection here and then all we need to do is supply this thing again with a 12 volt power and a ground so they're using a relay and the relay is going to be I mean it's really a harness that's prefabbed designed to go directly to the battery and that's what we're doing 
we're wiring this guy directly to the battery power ground and then the load for the relay it's going to come from the battery and then they give you a switch the switch is simply going to control the control side of this relay so i guess the nice thing about this especially for those of you that aren't that familiar with wiring there really isn't a lot of thinking you need to do is simply connecting this to your battery and then why uh, running this harness back inside the car and having a switch and I'm gonna modify this a little bit I'm gonna use an existing switch on my truck uh, but, but we can cover more of this relay operation later but pretty pretty nice prefabbed harness if you ask me um, routing this would be the most difficult part but as far as complications and how do I wire a relay and how do I wire a light, no big deal here. This is a nice harness. So my next plan of attack is I'm actually going to uh, mount these brackets on the light bar and see where they fall in my truck. I believe these are going to go in the door jam area. And by the way, there are no instructions that come with this. No markings for left and right for the brackets. So a little trial and error, no big deal. All right, so I'm just determining left and right with these brackets. And these, these are definitely going to sit in this area, which means I'll be drilling holes here. I think I'm okay with that. I certainly like this better than drilling a hole. That, that, the, mount, the mounts that came with it, you're, you drill here. And they, they do come with a you know, a rubber plug, but do I want to drill a hole in the top of my cab? I mean, some people might want to do that. Uh, that's what kind of makes this a little bit universal, I guess, but I'm, I'm not doing it that way. I like the brackets for sure. And uh, one of the things I have to consider is my OnStar antenna. So I'm trying to figure out left and right on these brackets. And, uh, that's going to put my light bar in front of this. And if I use this one, not the greatest camera angle for you guys, but you can see that the light bar is going to be hitting this. Now that doesn't mean we can't move it up. I'm pretty sure though that it's going to go this way. And I think you can see the curve of this bracket matches my truck exactly. So pretty nice prefabbed piece, I think. All right, so left side, left side. To these brackets, have three mounting points. There's four, I need four for each. So three for the bracket and then one for the light. And uh, here's our hardware. Right, three on each side, three for the bracket, three for the bracket. And then they've, they've only given me an extra one. Let's see if that thread's in. Yeah, it's not even the right thread for that. So in my Silverado kit that they sent me, um, it did not have the bolts for the brackets to go to the light. Now, in this company's defense, they did send me this kit. This was when I ordered it for the Jeep. And let's see what this comes with. They're much smaller holes. Kind of like that better rather than drilling some giant hole in my truck. Or, yeah, they, they didn't send them in here either. So this, the Jeep brackets, a little bit different setup for the Jeep. You see the, the layout of these holes. So they, they only gave me five. So I guess they anticipated I use two on each side and have an extra one. Here's the thing. There's no bolt for the light. Well, that's not good for this company right off the bat. 
when you order something, everything should be in there, right? One of the main pieces I need, I am missing. Now, being a mechanic, it's not a problem. I just got to locate the right pitch and thread and uh, size of bolt to put in there. But the fact that it's not here, it's irritating. All right, I found some bolts. Fortunately for me, as I said, I'm a mechanic and I carry a bunch of nuts and bolts in my toolboxes. Uh, just want to be clear about the depth of this hole and uh, you need to use some shallow bolts. Now what these are, thread size and pitch, I don't have a way to measure that for you guys right now. Um, but these were in my toolbox and the fact that there's a little bit of RTV on these bolts tells me that these are most likely transmission pan bolts out of something. Maybe an old school Dodge transmission is my guess. Um, but that's definitely my, my guy and pretty small bolt as far as length because this hole inside it's not very deep and we don't want to bury that bolt and strip this out. But I'll tell you what, as a product review, right, that's what we're doing, there's nothing more frustrating than starting a project only to find out you're missing some key bolts and then you got to wrap everything up and drive to the parts store to get some components. That's something that needs to be corrected, so I'm sure the company will be watching this. And uh, yeah, two bolts, two main bolts missing for the brackets to the light bar and it did not come in either kit either the jeep kit that i had or the chevy kit all right the question for me now is going to be which way do i want to mount this oh i just noticed too guys there's another hole another mounting hole in this location and that one will take a little bit longer of a bolt but two places that we can mount it. Interesting, I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to use yet. And I also don't know if there's an up or, or down. I suppose it really does not matter. We'll put this on the driver's side. And what that'll do is bracket will sit here That wiring harness is going to be in the way. Let's see if I mount it on the other side. This part doesn't really matter, guys. I'm just a little bit picky with certain things. Here. No, it really doesn't matter. What I don't know is which one I'm going to use. Am I going to use this one? Or am I going to use this one? It's just going to move. What that's going to do is it's just going to move the light bar further forward. I think I'm going to try. I'm going to use that one first. We'll see how it goes. This is where I'm going to need another hand setting this up. The reason I'm mounting them here is I want to mark real well on my cab where I'm going to drill holes. <clears throat> Something else to consider is running this harness, this guy, into my truck. This doesn't, this doesn't come apart, so it's not like I can drill a hole in the roof of the truck and feed this down in because what I want to do is I'm just not sure yet all of this needs to be considered before you drill holes see what I want to do on my truck is they have an auxiliary I can't shut this light off sorry there is an auxiliary light switch you see it's got a little LED on it too um, it's like for emergency lights that this truck was designed that it could have 
either emergency or clearance lights. And what I really want to do, because this is not being used, right? It's not being used by anything, is I want to use the wiring for that. I can use that to control the relay. That's what I want to do. I just got to figure out where um, I'm going to run the wiring for this. And again, it's not like I'm not going to drill a big giant hole to run that harness down. Now, if I could take the connector off and just feed the cable, maybe. Um, maybe the OnStar piece could be an option. Removing that and seeing, I don't know. Then I got to take the whole headliner off. So I don't want to do that. I almost think that what they wanted you to do is run that main harness down the side here and run it under the under the hood that way in which case then you would take the smaller wire for that harness that I showed with the switch on it run it through the firewall and then you'd have a switch on your on your dash somewhere hmm it might be better than drilling a hole. I really wanted to use that existing wiring that I have on my truck, but I do not want to drill a giant hole in here. All right, I just have this sitting up here. I had my wife come out and hold the other side up so I could mark where I'm going to put this. Mrs. Scanner Danner did not want to be on video. But when I started, I had the brackets bolted here, and it would work, but what I found is that it really didn't sit very flush against the body of the car on both sides. It was a little bit tweaked. It fits a lot better using this hole in the back. And you see that it sits back just a little bit further too. So the bracket, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch difference with the length of the bar and it just uh, it fits the body of the car a lot better and so what I'm gonna do mounting this you see where it's it's gonna sit which is pretty nice I like that um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this side as close to the OnStar unit as I can and right now it's it's actually resting on the roof of the truck so that's as low as it's going to go. I have to consider that this has the ability to rotate once it's in place. And um, I just don't want to hit my, my OnStar antenna, although I want it as close to it as possible. Because if I move it, I feel like if I move this too far forward, and I can move it further forward, um, I just don't want to get a glare inside of my truck from this light being too close to the windshield that's my concern um, got a little trial and error here but once I decide what I'm gonna do there's really no going back because I'm gonna be drilling holes here now, I don't like what they've given me let me let me show you those again look at the size of this nut what they want you to do is drill a hole a huge hole and then pound this in and it has little uh, grips on it once you do that and then that's what you bolt to I would almost rather use a self tapping screw I just I don't want to drill that big of a hole I don't think I need to I think it's overkill and here's one of the ones that came out of my Jeep kit those are the ones I'm going to use, guys. There is no reason that I need to take that much metal out of the, you know, the cab of my truck. I'm going to use the smaller ones. Now, granted, the the nut, the head of the nut is smaller, so I might use a small washer, but I'm. I'm using the Jeep ones and I'm only going to put two. I'm not doing all three. I'm just going to do two on this side and two on the other. So I don't like that. Way too big. It's overkill. Huge hole. I mean, you're, you're almost better off using sheet metal screws and then if they strip out on you, then you can drill holes and put the nut in. I'm not sure. I don't like that. 
there's a specific angle too um, in the the cab line of the truck where it it kind of comes in and narrows both sides of the windshield come in like this so depending on where I put the bracket it also is going to determine which of the two mounting holes I use here because if I slide it up this way it actually pulls the the um, ears further apart because again the cabs rounded and so I believe that's part of why they give you two mounting points which is kind of nice um, let me measure this real quick really need a second hand for this guys for this part is that measure twice cut once measure twice drill once so where I measured from is this little crease here and I went three inches back I put my, my hole in this area that is hanging over the windshield right now but I have it angled down here was my fear and the reason why I think I wanted to move it back forward some with it further back on the cab I couldn't put the light down as low as maybe I needed it to and, and if I so in other words I was limited on the hood on the roof line if I move it back further I can't move the light down as low as maybe I will need it and I uh, don't want that so any glare I might get on the inside I don't know we'll see um, I just don't want to mount this and have my light way up in the air and not have the ability to aim it down at the ground where I need it so I think that's important and that's why I'm choosing to um, take a chance on any glare I might have shoot I can always put my sun visor down if I have to uh, but I moving it forward was key I think with this let me mark this I'll tell you what I'm gonna do guys as a temporary measure I really feel like I'm going to uh, use a sheet metal a self tapping sheet metal screw I'll draw a small hole in the center and and uh, put a sheet metal screw in there for now just to um, I just don't have another hand to help me hold the other side. Let's see if this stayed in place. You can kind of see what I'm talking about as far as the way the light is hanging right now. Um, if I had somebody holding the other side, I, I could show you. Um, but this this piece will move. Right, I'll have the full adjustment of this. Yeah, I really think. My only fear, again, is that I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a glare inside. I don't want that. But, I think I'd rather I'd rather have it where I, I can angle it down where it is now than if I move it back on the on the roof line, it won't be able to drop as low. And so I think it's important to, to leave it where I have it, which is three inches back from that first crease. Look at the other side. Something else to consider is how deep you put this. We want to make sure that this weather seal can still go down in there. So I don't really have much of an option on the first hole back here, but I certainly can angle this up and down. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just one on each side. That was dumb. I'm going to do one on each side I'm using a center punch.
Again, just doing a temporary measure here, guys. I'm using a sheet metal screw. I mean, I may end up keeping it this way. These are just some screws I had laying around. I think if I would plan on doing this this way, I would want to make sure that these are stainless. I don't know. Use some silicone there too, maybe. Let's get one on the other side. Just doing one for now. And all I did was drill a 5 30 seconds hole right here. Exactly three inches from that. So I'm kind of viewing this as, you know, if these end up coming loose on me, I can, I can always put those captured nuts in later. I have decided I am not drilling those giant holes. I'm using these screws that I have. And this one's about to get a treatment of some RTV. And if these ever come loose, if these ever come loose, I will use those captured nuts. I think that's what you call them. It's a captured nut. I'll use those at another time, but not right now. Help if I had a Phillips screwdriver with me. That's enough to hold it for now. All right, because I'm just using sheet metal screws, I'm gonna do all three. Just a 5 30 seconds hole. Just using some uh, ultra black RTV stuff I had sitting around in the house. Some pretty thin sheet metal. He's tightening up pretty good. Got a lot of leverage with this screwdriver. I'm pretty comfortable with that. We'll go over to the other side. I believe this wiring we're gonna run down behind this too. Not gonna be using my existing wiring like I wanted to. At least I don't think. I don't really want to drill a hole in the middle of my roof. I think we can run this down the side and in here and I think the door will still close properly. I hope. Let's try it. Still got a pretty good amount of flex in that. Let's see. Not a huge fan of that. There is that catch piece, so worst case scenario, we get some water down in here, which you're going to anyway with this gap. That's why this little catch piece is here, and then there's another seal inside the door. I guess I'm okay with having it there. I mean I could always run it down the side of the windshield itself. How do we keep it there though is a question. There's a trim piece. If I could go inside of that. No. Just, I'm not a huge fan of the wiring setup for this.
I'm pretty comfortable with these sheet metal screws, boys and girls. Manufacturer might be frowning upon it. Some of you might be frowning upon it. I'm not drilling big giant holes in the cab of my truck. And if I have to at a later time, I will. For any of you deciding to do this in the future, I suggest stainless steel screws. I'm sure these are not and they're going to rust. So I'll definitely be putting some WD-40 on these or something to keep them from rusting. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Just a little bit unprepared as far as hardware goes today. I think this existing wiring harness is going to come in real handy now. Oh, that's pretty convenient. Where I'm going to put this, this cover comes off. That's going to come down here. Tuck that in the fender. This is a weather pack seal, which is nice. There is a weather connector in there. That's cool. Tuck that guy up into the fender. inside I do I want to be inside the hinge not outside because there'll be other pinch points I'm going to stay away from the wiper arm which is here I really want to stay away from the the hinge too much as I can. I think I'm going to go underneath. Yep. Stay away from this hinge completely. This relay will absolutely corrode out here in this environment. This is not a weather tight seal, this relay eventually. It'll take a couple years, but it will corrode. So maybe some dielectric grease around that connector would help. Um, but what we're gonna do is <clears throat> battery positive. We can go right to this junction right on this mega fuse and put it here there is an inline fuse it's protecting this circuit this is actually a pretty nice setup what they've supplied us with this whole relay this is done right we're taking power directly from the battery we fuse protected it there's an inline fuse it's on a what kind of break or what kind of fuse it's a 30 amp fuse I'm going to put my ground, I'll, I'll actually put the ground here, keep it away from the battery because my battery um, really doesn't have a good spot for it. So we'll just go right on, on one of these brackets, clean the paint off, we should be fine. All right, let me get my ratchet. All right, I want to be clear about what I'm doing here. Um, I am disconnecting a main feed. It's crazy. Uh, disconnecting a main feed. This is still hot, so I want to make sure that my ratchet does not hit anything. I should disconnect the battery. But the reason I am not is I do not feel like resetting my radio stations. So I'm just being lazy. I'm also being cautious. Definitely want to Disconnect your battery when you're taking a hot lead off. Disconnect your negative terminal. Negative. Yeah. 
Hey, Bo. My son Bo is here now. You can't see him, but you could maybe hear him. Bo, say hi to everyone. Hi. Bo has a donut in his mouth. <laughs> Bo, you're here to see the lights work for the first time. What do you mean? You have to Look at the light bar. It's up on the. It's up on my my roof already. Sweet. I wanted to do that with you. I know you did, but you were at school and I had an opportunity to do it today, so there wasn't a whole lot you would have been able to help me with. Yeah, because it's up there. So this is the moment of truth, Bo. It should work as soon as I connect this and turn the switch on. They look cool. Now, are they going to be bright? Is the question. The ones I saw in Top Gear were really bright. They had these on Top Gear? Mm -hmm. One of the guys was like stuck on a snow mountain and they were trying to get them in one of the light bar polish trucks. Figure out where we're going to mount this relay and stuff here in a minute. But, and then I gotta put this switch inside the truck, Bo. Here, but you can be the, you can do the honors. Don't do it yet. Just gonna lower my hood so we can capture this on the camera. That's gonna go inside the car. I gotta route that inside the car. All right, Bo is on camera. Bo, say hi to everyone. Hi. All right, you see the, uh, turn that toward me. You can, don't hit the button yet. Um, turn that, yeah, I want to zoom in on your hand. You see there's a little uh, LED light that's on there. And uh, it is lit. And, okay, Bo, hit the button. It should work. Whoa. Wow, that is bright. I told you. Holy smokes. I'm blind. Turn that back on again. Ah, those are bright. Those are super bright. Holy crap. I'll see that from an angle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are those like high beams? The weird part is when you move back and forth, there's like different angles. I it's know. like, it's right actually, here, like, I, don't, I don't know if the camera will capture this. Leave them on for a second. I'll see if I can show it. So as I'm looking at it straight on, it looks like it has some dim parts, but it really doesn't. They move. Yeah, cool. The camera does show it. So the, the way the mirrors are for the, um, the light bar, it pretty much is angling the light. So those bright and dim spots are just because of an angle. As far as brightness goes, guys, I don't have a gauge that I can tell you how bright they are. We'll just have to try them out at night and you're gonna have to take my word for it. I'm still daylight here and these are blinding me. All right, let's mount this cable now. All right, my son Bo is asking some good questions as usual, and he wants to know where we're gonna mount this. Well, fortunately, Bo, whenever I did my amplifier, I have a cable already that runs in, and uh, what we're gonna do, hold on. Daddy, is there a way that you could take that cable and mount it to the other switch that's in there? No, I'm not gonna uh, use that switch, because I have to take everything apart. I, I showed it, uh, Bo's asking me about that switch up top that I showed you guys earlier, we're not going to use that. Um, just because we to use that switch up there, we'd have to take more of the dash. We might be able to at a later time. I think for this now, I'm not going to. Here, take that inside the truck. And I need to feed this into you. What I need to do, it would really be helpful if this connector wasn't here, this connector makes feeding it inside of the vehicle difficult. What the manufacturer should have done is made this more of like a bullet style 
So a suggestion to um, to uh, aux beam is to you know I got to feed this inside the vehicle and I don't want to drill a giant hole to fit this plastic piece. But fortunately, I have some grommets that I can use. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know how much I can show you this. So I've pulled this grommet out of the firewall. You see all that light in there. That's my son's inside there. And uh, this is the grommet that I poked a hole through for my amp wire. I'm gonna use the same spot. I went up and over the master cylinder, staying away from the steering column, moving parts You guys aren't going to see what I'm doing. Can you grab it? Yeah. Go ahead, pull it in. Go ahead, keep pulling. Okay, that's good. So if you guys have a Silverado and you're doing this, where you want to put it, right there in that grommet, there was an existing cable See the factory cable that was in there, the red wire is my amplifier, the black wire is that piece that we just installed for the lights. Go ahead, buddy, you can hit the switch, let's just make sure everything's still working. Okay, cool, turn it off. And how much, how much room do we have, how much slack do we have? Uh, we got lots of room, huh? See, what Bo and I wanted to do is we wanted to use that existing switch up there. Uh, it's still a possibility. We'd have to do some well, modifications. Yeah, we'd have to take the... Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's really necessary. I mean, that switch, let me see that real quick. <coughs> it has 3M tape on the back of it, so literally we could, we could mount this like on the dash mm -hmm. and just be done with it. I don't know, we'll figure out where we're going to route that here in a few. Let's go under the hood and finish our wiring there. Alright, Bo is going to help me do these zip ties on this harness. First thing we want to do is we want to mount this relay somewhere. need to take these two guys we're gonna put a zip tie here can you do that yeah. take one from this side you just want to keep this nice and tight and away from the engine I'm just using this existing harness to do that let me put this one in first Bo is going to be the next Scanner Danner, aren't you, Bo? Mm -hmm. Or he's going to be an engineer. Bo is super smart. Good. Yep. The rest of them, too. Good. Good. All right. I am cameraman now. So what we want to do, Bo, is we, we have to keep this away. See, the, see this rod that comes down out of the yeah. inside? That's called your steering column. Okay, and that moves, so we want to keep this harness away from anything that moves. So um, this area down in here is very safe. We just got to keep it away from the hood uh, hinge because that part moves. So I think what you had suggested, which is let's try to make this into a nice clean loop. We can disconnect our piece here again. I'll just pull this out of here and I can rotate it. All right, Bill. Yeah, do what you said. Let's make your loop start from here, and I'll twist this to make it good. Yep, perfect. Now zip tie that. Nice. And then get another one on this side. We'll do two. Stay there. Here. All the ends of the zip ties. Cut them off.
You have those zip ties, bud? Yep. Let me have them. Okay. What we want to do when you have a loop of harness like this, you don't want it flopping around, so I'm going to zip tie it to another cable here. Sweet. Thanks for your help, Bo. All right, the last piece is for under the hood, which I'm not going to show you because I do not have any. Is uh, putting some dielectric grease. I'm going to put some dielectric packet in this fuse holder, and then also on the relay, uh, the back of the relay and the connectors. I'm going to put dielectric on there to keep the the corrosion at bay. I mean, it'll be fine like that for a couple of years, but it will corrode. I don't know if you guys saw that too in my that last segment, but I tucked the wire inside of the fender there. It worked really well. And uh, we're just gonna leave this cable just sitting there like that. I don't see a reason why we need to do anything else with it. Um, it might not be a bad idea to just put a couple dabs of RTV on there just to hold that in place, but it actually should sit there. And I shouldn't have any issues with it closing. Yeah, that actually stays even outside. I mean, that can come out. If I don't, if I don't mount it, you'd have to pull on it pretty tight. But I'd rather it sit there. I mean, I could put it down inside of here, lower, and that would hold it. That works too. Yeah, I'm good with that. That looks clean. No pinch points. Remember, this circuit's fuse protected too. If this would ever give an issue wear through and short the wiring, it's not ideal. But I'm okay with it. It's actually lower than, than that seam that we were measuring from before. Now we just got to figure out this right, some of these shots are difficult I, I need room all I did guys is take this cover off right here that was it that's all you missed so far uh, I'm gonna try to feed this thing up through you gotta stay away from the emergency brake mechanism so I don't want to hit anything in there Cool. That works. I really think I'm going to just put this right here. Why not? Run that cable right there. You won't even see it. Convenient that it's right next to my, my headlight switch, isn't it? I can put it there too. I can all stay.
nice. There it is. Just don't want to forget to and leave them on, right? It's the only downside of this setup with this relay. See, if I would have wired this myself, I would have made the power feed for the control side of the relay ignition switch fed, not battery positive fed. And that way you could leave it. If you forgot and left it on, you'd be okay. Um, the other thing you can do is, man, there's so many different ways to wire fog lights and aftermarket lights, but you can use the parking light, you can use the headlight circuit as the control side of the relay. Um, this switch itself here is only drawing about 100 milliamps. It only takes about 100 milliamps of current to energize the control side of that relay. Uh, these are bright, man. I'll show them to you on my fence here. So it's still daylight. I mean, it's, it's getting dusk. It's after 4. Um, it's dark about 5 o'clock, but you still see even in the daylight they're pretty bright all right just an after shot of the lineup of my light compared to where the windshield is for any of you guys mounting this you see that I'm actually just over top of the windshield see the distance away from my own star antenna okay I use the back bracket hole not the front one lined this up very well I went three inches back from that crease where you guys saw me measuring to the first hole and then this was a big concern of mine is what kind of glare if any I see nothing up here at all nothing from the light at all you see the final of that it's not perfect I don't like that there's a wire here but whatever it was easy to do I'm away from everything under the dash that's all tucked up in there I'm away from my brake pedal you want to watch for the brake pedal watch for the e-brake another pinch point again was the the um, hood hinge the steering column we stayed away from that stuff stayed away from the wiper arms let's just show you the tools real quick a drill i used one drill bit which was a uh, five just a five thirty seconds drill bit i got this kit at the local parts store cheap drill bit kit uh, a drill tape measure screwdriver center punch hammer pair of dykes, some zip ties, a uh, socket set just a quarter inch uh, to adjust the lighting and that is a 10 millimeter. I'm going to take this I'm going to take this with me for a while because I'm not sure the adjustment of that light just yet. Uh, a little bit of brake clean that's what I use to clean my dash. Not ideal alcohol would have been better for that 3M tape but it's what I had. Um, that's pretty much it. There wasn't a whole lot to it. Uh, as far as the brackets go, I did not use, obviously, my Jeep brackets that the company originally sent for me. I did not use those. I didn't use any of the hardware that came with the Jeep brackets. Uh, I didn't use the hardware that came with my Silverado package. There's all of those. You saw I just used sheet metal screws. These came in the kit these would be parts that you'd mount on the um, on the, the roof I didn't use those um, and what I thought was interesting too is these pieces I see I, when I unboxed this I don't remember where these came from now I know where I could have used those and I mentioned them earlier and I didn't and I should have used this pad um, in between the bracket and the and the um, cab of the truck I should have put this on there would have added a little bit of extra protection um, to that so I'll save those in case I do end up taking those apart later the sheet metal screws maybe if they're not good enough I'll save these pads that's where they go 
is on the bracket between the bracket and the cab of the truck so definitely saving that so small mistake there really the only thing the manufacturer didn't give us was those two screws that went from the bracket to the light itself uh, and then I didn't use these rivets I have no idea uh, what the rivets were for I assume that would be another way it could be done is you could rivet the brackets on they sure seem like they'd be the right size for these Jeep ones so I'd rather a rivet than a than those captured nuts looks like they were supplied for the Jeep absolutely that's what those were for See, I would have rather riveted them on my truck. Um, I guess they're giving you options. I'm not sure if the rivets came with my my Silverado one or not. So that's an option too. I could always, if those screws end up giving me problems, I could always rivet them in. And, and in part, in large part, because I didn't make these huge holes. Imagine the size of that. Just look at my fingernail and look at the size of that. That'd be a huge hole. Yeah, just didn't want to do it that way. So not too bad, huh guys? It looks pretty cool, I like it. I'm real excited to see how it does as soon as it gets dark. So I'm gonna take you guys for a ride with me. We'll try to get some shots of that. Uh, just some final comments on the install of this. Um, it wasn't hard at all. You guys, even a weekend warrior can do it, do this no problem, do it yourself for no problem. Uh, I am a auto mechanic professional by trade for 25 years, so this is what I do. Uh, but this is a project that that I think really anyone with minimal hand skills and knowledge can handle, especially if it's a Silverado. Just follow the steps that I've shown. If you're interested in this product, you'll find links to it in the description of this video. And again, a disclaimer here, guys, this product was given to me. Company said, hey, you want to shoot a, a video for this? We'll give it to you. And uh, so that was it. I was not paid by this company. It was just simply a uh, company that reached out to me and really wanted some exposure here on YouTube. And I get a free light bar out of it. So that was the deal there. But you'll find the product in the description of this video if you have any questions make sure you leave comments I'll do my best to answer them also if I forget to tell you later in closing because we're gonna get some shots of the lighting here visit my website it's scannerdanner.com I teach at an automotive technical school uh, electronics computer controls is my specialty and I can teach you really um, how to fix modern cars your tech engine light drivability running problem that's what I do. So come visit me on my website. Leave some comments here. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get some shots of how this thing looks in the dark. Low beams, high beams, and yeah. <laughs> there's low beams, there's high beams back to low here's the light bar I'm gonna blind everyone <laughs> sorry let's try that again that is super bright I think I want to angle them up just a little bit it might keep some of the glare off the hood all right looks like my white balance changed a little bit here on my camera I did an adjustment uh, this is low beam, this is high beam. You see how dark my hood is. Uh, and then uh, let's put the low beams back on. Here's with the, with the light bar. I mean, it lights everything up. <laughs> uh, but you can see it, it does light the hood up more than I would like. Uh, I, I think it would be a little bit distracting as far as if I'd ever need it. Not that I ever need this light bar. It's pretty much a... I don't know <laughs> just something that's cool I'm just not anywhere where I'd ever really need it but it is super bright I mean there there's my high beams 
without the light bar, that's width. Without and with.